Hello, today we're going to be doing standard 3.2, which is on neutrino oscillations. And we're going to be tackling problem 3.17 out of McIntyre. Before we get to the problem in hand, we should note a little bit about neutrinos and what neutrino oscillations are. So, it turns out in physics there is a certain type of reaction called beta decay, and it, this is where a free neutri neutron decays to a proton and electron. And physicists ended up figuring out that this, this beta decay process doesn't conserve energy or angular momentum, and this is of course a problem. So a physicist named Wolfgang Pauli proposed a third particle involved in this decay process, and Fermi later named this particle the neutrino. Um, turns out there are different types of neutrinos for different fundamental particles. For example, there's an electron neutrino and a muon neutrino. And those are going to be the two of importance for this problem. And each of these particles are called leptons and are some of the fundamental particles in the current standard model for physics. And it's convenient to define a lepton flavor quantum number L. And we can consider this, this quantum number as a measure, as an observable, and of course we can have an operator for it then if we'd like. However, for this problem, it is not necessary to talk about this. But to kind of get an idea of what this flavor quantum number is, we could assign the electron, like Le, corresponding to electron, we can set it to 1 for the electron and negative 1 for its associated electron neutrino. And right now, there's no theoretical basis for this conservation, for the conservation of this flavor quantum number. So we allow for the probability, or the Probably. We allow for the possibility that these quantum numbers are only approximately conserved. And this allows for the possible reaction where we oscillate between an electron neutrino and a muon neutrino. We go back and forth. And that is going to be the, the process that we're looking at in this problem. So the problem considers, says to consider an electron neutrino with an energy of 8 mega electron volts. How far must this neutrino travel before it oscillates to a muon neutrino? To do this, we'll assume the neutrino mixing parameters given in the text, which I have below written, and how many complete oscillations going to a muon neutrino and back will take place if this neutrino travels from the sun to the earth and through the earth. So, first we will note the formula given for the probability of this oscillation. And this, pro and this formula is derived in a similar way as the spins-flip process given in McIntyre in the same chapter. So the probability of going from an electron neutrino to a muon neutrino is sine squared of theta, which we denote, which we call the mixing angle, times sine squared of this quantity here, which is the mass, the differences of the masses of the masses squared. So we have mass one squared, mass mass two squared, times length, times c cubed, which is the speed of light cubed, all over four times the energy times h bar. And here, the length, which we'll be looking at more in this problem, is the distance between the source and the detector. And recent results from the solar and reactor neutrino experiments indicate the following values. For these, here we have the differences of the masses squared, or the differences, yes, which is approximately equal to 8 times 10 to the negative fifth electron volt squared over the speed of light to the fourth, the mixing angle is approximately 69 degrees. And we're just going to take that these mixing parameters are correct, and we can use them in the problem, and then we simply just have to solve for L. So we have this probability here, and we're going to set it equal to 1. It's possible that the, that the probability is not 1. It can go anywhere in between 0 and 1. However, we're going to assume that to make sure we are... We want to find the length to, be, to know that we are certain that we will get this oscillation. So once we have this, we can solve for L, and we get that L is equal to 32 mega electron volts times h bar c times the inverse sine of one over sine to one over sine to the six, six, sine of 69 degrees, all over eight times 10 to the negative fifth electron volts squared. And when we calculate all of this, we get that length is equal to 5.45 times 10 to the six meters. Okay, so to complete this problem, we need to calculate the complete oscillations over these two distances, and we'll need to do this. We'll need two different distances. We need the distance from the sun to the earth, and the radius of the earth. So here we have the length from the sun to the earth. That should be noted here that this is actually the length of the sun to the earth, not just the length of the sun. That is equal to 
1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. The radius of the Earth is 6.371 times 10 to the 6 meters. And to calculate the number of complete oscillations from the Sun to the Earth, we find what we are going to denote it by O Sun. And to do this, we just take a ratio of the um, the length and the length of, between the Sun and the Earth and the length needed to have a complete to have an oscillation. Then we're going to have to multiply by one half because that'll just be the total number of oscillations. However, we need two of them to get a complete cycle. So, okay, here we have that value, and that is O sun equal to 1.38 times 10 to the fourth. And for O earth, it is true that the, the earth being dense and not necessarily a vacuum may play a little role in affecting affecting how much it oscillates, however, we're just going to take this as negligible and avoid it. So once again, we just use a ratio. And if we take the ratio of the radius of the Earth and the length, we, it turns out that we're, we're not certain to get one. And these values, we should note again that this is these are the numbers of o complete oscillation cycles that we are certain we will get. It is possible to get more or less. However, I guess not necessarily less here, but certain we could get more. However, we are certainly going to get this many. So that'll be the end of my problem. So thank you. Bye.